Do you ever, have you ever had any huge broigusses in your family? No, I'm too nice to have had a, a broigus. If anyone can bring a broigus out of you, it'll probably be me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But also I like that it's treif, which is like mm. the Yiddish term for something that's not kosher. <laughs> Breaks the rules a bit. Not really supposed to have milk and meat, but the Reuben is like a special sandwich where there's lots of different things going on. It's in perfect balance, isn't it? This is our piece of brisket after 10 days in the cure. For pastrami, we smoke it for 10 hours in the smoker. For the salt beef, we cook it in a sous vide for a secret amount of time. So you want a nice, generous tower of meat. I bought this kind of quite crappy coal smoker and I just started smoking pastrami in my parents' back garden. I'd have to get my mum to help me lower it into the smoker. Then I'd wrap it up in foil twice stick it in a crate and drive it. I remember your car. You remember my car? Remember so the all the juice would kind of seep out of the pastrami <laughs> into the boot of my car. I really ruined that car. Russian dressing is like the same as Mary Rose sauce or Thousand Island dressing. They're all like very, very similar. Uh, every deli has their own secret recipe. <laughs> And then our own house-made mustard. We make it from seed and we go through a lot of it. It's somewhere between English mustard and American star deli mustard. We like a bit of heat, but not too much. It's just throwing some meat and some bread. <laughs> so some people really. I think there'll be some people that will always just be dicks about it, basically. Sour cut is key to the sandwich because it's all fermented, it, it helps you digest all that big load of meat and cheese. There's no vinegar in ours, so the only ingredients are cabbage and salt. I made this sandwich yesterday. Tell me what you think about it. Salt beef, fine. Yeah. Mayonnaise. Oh, God. Lettuce. Oh, God. <laughs> it's difficult, isn't it? I'm trying to do something traditional when people know what they want mm. and they're used to having what they want all the time. So how, what have we, how do we, where do we sit with that? We're pretty good at accommodating people. Mm -hmm. If people want mayonnaise, we'll give them mayonnaise. <laughs> if people want their fresh bagel toasted, mm. we'll toast it. <laughs> I'm torn because I, saw, I, I think the traditional ways are the best ways. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I don't like it when there's people who tell you, oh, you can't do it like this, oh, yeah. you mustn't do it like that. I saw this funny thing on the menu says, we've worked hard trying to create these combinations, please don't. Oh. <laughs> Let's... Yeah, if you see something like that, then you know you're in a restaurant run by schmucks. <laughs> we use a light rye bread that we developed with our baker. It's got a good amount of rye flour in. It's got caraway seeds in. I mean, the sandwich itself is like a kind of cartoon of a sandwich, isn't it? <laughs> We like a nice mild cheese that melts well, so we go for Emmental. This is a very iconic sandwich. It takes a long time to put this thing together. The meat takes 10 days, the sauerkraut takes two weeks. It's a real labor of love, and I think that shows when you eat it. There should be a sense of humor in what you see. That it should be a family place. And is that like traditionally what a Jewish deli is? Fundamentally, the most important thing is that the salt beef and the pastrami is particular to that place. Mm. More established delis would have their regulars who kind of gather at the counter and do what is referred to as kibitzing, which is basically shooting the breeze, but generally just a group of people getting together, laughing, joking, having fun, and stuffing their faces with uh, cured meat. <laughs>